Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Dre Broadcasting Network for more action with the Extreme Motorsports 99. Tonight, we are coming to you live from Kentucky Speedway for the Pit Light 125 for round 8 of the Extreme Motorsports 99 Pro Can N series, courtesy of iRacing Broadcast Overlay and Graphics iBog. Check them out, the IBOG. Dot co that is ibog.co with Jason Allison. Well, I am your commentator Sean Zill here tonight. And I am joined by my good friend and producer Dave Everly. How are you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing great. Ready to go. Green flag racing here at Kentucky. Oh, 10 4 to that. And Dave, tell us a little bit about tonight's race, please. Taking a look here at our weather real quick. Uh, got 78 degrees, track temp 78 degrees, partly cloudy with the wind out of the north at two mile an hour. The drivers do have a 50% fuel limit, that is 5 0% for 128 laps, so that is 2 to uh, 3 green flag pit stops, or I should say 2 to 3 required pit stops uh, for the drivers in order for them to be successful here tonight for once again 128 laps. Well, going over our current season standings, we do still have Cody McFadden in the lead in points. Hunter McDaniel still second. Ralph Vanderpoor still third. Marty Ray went from fifth to fourth place this week. Travis Pryor from eighth to fifth, gaining three spots this far. We have the 05 Tommy Massey from seventh to sixth. Garrett Robinson, who missed last week's race, did drop from second place down to seventh this week. Gary Woolbot, so Garrett Robinson and Gary Woolbot actually both tied for seventh place, and Gary did go from sixth uh, to seventh. The 12 of Damian Crump uh, did go from fourth place to eighth place this week. Adam Eisenhower from tenth place to ninth, and Waylon Williams uh, rounding out the top ten, and Waylon is new uh, to the top ten. Well, so far the drivers are now gritting out, so we will give them a few seconds before we go down the list. And tonight we have a new driver here in the in tonight's race. We do have 42 of Giuseppe Higuera. That name does sound way too familiar. I believe he did race uh, last week in the uh, in the truck series here at Extreme Motorsports 99. But going over our current race grid, we have a 66 of Ralph Vanderforst, Mr. High Side himself, taking the pole here tonight. And first place uh, practice time as well. 57 Hunter McDaniel starting second. Marty Ray last week's win, having his first win of the season, starting third. 11 of Ken Ladd, fourth. 97 of Garrett Robinson back from vacation, fifth. That rounds up the top five. The 40 of Joshua Gillen, sixth. Uh, we have the 42 new driver, Giuseppe Higuera, seventh. The 36 of Jason Eisenhower, 8th. The 10 of Caleb Daniels, 9th. And the 31 of Andrew Riley, 10th. And that does round up the top 10. Second race for this driver right here. First appearance last week at Auto Club. The 47 of Dirk Stalicker starting in 11th place. 48 of Christopher Smith, 12th. The 95 of Chris Gillum, a new driver as well here tonight, starting 13th. The 4 of Michael Snow, 14th. 34 of David Schneer, 15th. 59 of David White, 16th. 25 of Timothy McBrayer, 17th. 03 of Don Kidder Jr., 18th. And the 5, Gary Wubot, being the last driver to qualify here tonight, starting in the 19th place spot. We do have Travis Pryor starting in the 20th place spot. We have Andy Starcher, 21st. Waylon Williams, 23rd. Adam Eisenhower and Rick Mason, and that does round up the uh, the field. I did skip uh, Mason Wetzel and Vern Bradley because they are admins and are not racing. So tonight that will give us a uh, 24 car field at Kentucky Speedway for the Pit Light 125 here by the Extreme Motorsports 99 Pro Can N Series, brought to you by iRacing Broadcast Overlay and Graphics iBog. Check them out at ibog.co, and that is Jason Allison. Well, as we speak, the drivers are now rolling off pit road here. Pit speed, I should say pace speed, 60 miles an hour, being led once again by the 66 of Ralph Van der Force, Mr. High Side himself. Ralph will have the 65 Marty Ray last week's winner right behind him. Hunter Big down on the outside with help with the 11 of Ken Ladd. And we are missing our season standings leader, uh, Cody McFadden. I believe he did tell us he was going to uh, not be here tonight. Uh, but we look forward to seeing him again back with us next week for the Napa Auto Parts 150. We are now entering turn number three and exiting turn four. Going green for the first time, this time by 425, 28 laps, sorry, with a 50% fuel limit. Let's get her done. A pace car is off. 
Ralph still holding pace with the drivers, getting by some nice and tight here. Trying to get caught off, off guard. He does put it down the floor. He does catch the drivers off guard. Hunter McDaniel, 11 can lie to the rescue. 65 Mori Ray Fox leaving in front of Benefit. Of trying to get the inside of the 11th can lad. And he just might have position entering turn number one. Yes, he does. Can lad will stay high. Hammer down the floor to try and get the slingshot off the end exit of turn two. But up front, Hunter McDaniel already challenging the success of Ralph Benefit for the race lead here on the front one backstretch. Ralph does go high, Hunter still falls short, no Ralph lets off the gas, his car was pushing up and that wall was sneaking up on him, but he was able to let off in time, but he will lose 3-4 spots here, just this one lap, 97 Garrett Robinson uh, being shown now in the 4th uh, place position, Ralph Van der Forst in the 5th place spot for the back in the pack, 42, Giuseppe Higuera behind the 10 of Caleb Daniels. Oh, Giuseppe gets hard into the way, he gets off the track, he gets spun out, the caution will fly on lap two, more wrecking for the back of the pack, let's back it up on 42 of Giuseppe Guerra and see what happened. Well, as we pull up the Dre Broadcasting Instant Replay here, we are going to focus on the 42 of Giuseppe here, as we are going to rewind this and take a look here, as Giuseppe is uh, running that midline, high line, oh, gets into the wall, sucked into the wall, pushed off the wall right in front of the 95, Ooh, carnage thereafter. Just let's take another look here from the blimp view. See if we can see exactly all the cars, but that is highly unfortunate. It's three or four cars also involved there. So that is going to be some heavy damage for some of these drivers early on. Yeah, absolutely. 81. Travis Pryor did get the worst a piece of that action. 59 of David White smoking heavily. And as we speak, he is still smoking up the track. Going to be going down to Pit Road to get one of his two backup cars. So that's the good thing about the drivers here. They do have two backup cars. So there's, uh, it's not over just yet for them. And we have some viewers in the chat there. I did forget to give you guys a shout out. Sorry about that. But it's very good to see you again there. Tim of the Potito. And congrats on the championship. Uh, Martinsville got eighth. Congratulations. Pat T as usual. Rooting on the 81 of Travis Pryor. Also have NASCAR Painter. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, George Gibbs Jr. Good to see you again. Now going back to the race here. We have a, a few drivers on pit road. A few drivers who were involved in the incident. We have Giuseppe Higuera, Travis Pryor, Gary Wubot. Uh, David White, Henrik Mason, all down pit road, but everybody electing to stay out. And Hunter McDaniel taking over the race the way from the 66 of Ralph Van der Forst. We have Marty Ray being shown second, Ken Ladd third, Garrett Robinson fourth, and Ralph Van der Forst rounding up the top five. And Dave, last week coming from Auto Club Speedway, we noticed that Ralph didn't really take advantage, or couldn't really take advantage of the high side as much as he would have at different tracks last week at Auto Club, uh, due to how bumpy it was and how difficult it was to work the outside line all the way around the racetrack. But here tonight, Dave, he has a lot of luck. But this is, it's that type of track. Yeah, it's Kentucky, so uh, we'll see what happens. Still early in the race, not enough rubber down on the track, so. We may get two, one or two lanes, but usually here in Kentucky, people like riding that high lane. So we'll see what happens. Well, they do have a 10 of Caleb Daniels, 31 Andrew Ryle here, 7th and 8th. 36 Jason Eisenhower, Dirk Stalicker uh, rounding up the uh, top 10. The lights on the pace car are still turned on. Yeah, this just might be a good time to get a race interview. And let's focus on the 36 of Jason Eisenhower. Yeah, we are being joined by 36 of Jason Eisenhower with Eisenhower Racing. Get a call up there, Jason. Good evening. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Well, but it is good to see you here tonight. I haven't spoken, uh, we haven't spoken to you in a very, very long time. How has the season been going? Uh, it's been going pretty good. It's uh, my first year here, so uh, uh, trying to, you know, fill out the uh, the tracks and the car 
and how everybody else is running. But uh, every, every week's an improvement, and uh, it's, it's going pretty good. Very enjoyable. Oh, 10 for very, very glad to hear that, Jason. And man, you have been improving with every single week, just like you had talked about, and that is very, very good to see you are headed the right direction here tonight, starting in the eighth place spot and currently ninth uh, behind the 10 of Caleb on the inside. But with what, what you've seen so far on the track, with how much grip you guys have and so much competition on the track, do you think you're going to take tonight to bring it home? Well, I think it's just going to take uh, patience, uh, a little give and take here and there, and uh, knowing when, when to. Uh, Plan, plan your attack uh, as far as making the pass at the right time. Oh, copy that. Well, Jason, we look forward to you putting that into action here tonight and hopefully having your first win, buddy. You have been doing an amazing job improving every single week, and that's very good to see. But, man, you are now back one to green, so keep doing exactly what you're doing and seeing Victor Lane. 10 4, thank you. Have a good night. And that was the 36 of Jason Eisenhower with Eisenhower Racing. Well, we are now back one to green, still being led by Hunter McDaniel. Ken Ladd right behind him on the inside. On the outside is Marty Ray with the help of the 97 of Garrett Robinson. And we are going green this time by. Oh, a, new, a new viewer there in the chat is going to be uh, Gus Polanco. I could see you there, buddy. Yeah, we've got some of the best viewers out there with George, Pat T, Tim. Uh, now Gus is joining, so... Let's guys, let's keep that chat up. Let us know what you think of the broadcast here as the pace car dips off. Coming out of turn number four, Hunter McDaniel hard on that throttle. Here comes the 11 of 10 left. 65, Marty Ray sleeping a little bit on that outside, but he's got the 97 there of Garrett Robinson closing in on him. Meanwhile, right behind him, they are going to stay too wide there. Well, Ralph Vanderforce, here we go. Back single file racing. And Ralph Vanderforce is hungry to take because rightfully his, which was that first place possession. So he will have a little bit of work to do here. Get around four drivers Garrett, Marty Ray, Ken Ladd, Anthony McDaniel. As we speak, he is going all the way high. Oh, he smacks the wall. He's going to be able to keep it up there. Yes, he does keep it up there. No harm. Then one driver in the grass, the four. Cut up on the track. He clips the six of Ralph Vanderforce. They are wrecking on the front of 25. And both us, we don't get a junior. Big wreck on the front straightaway. Oh man, let's back it up on the floor of Michael Snow and see what happened. Yeah, we got to see that one there firsthand, but we are going to pull up the instant replay here. Take a look, focusing on the 66 of Ralph Vanderborst as uh, he hits the wall, but that four machine, let's take a look at him and see how he got in the grass here. Coming out, oh, he got sideswiped there as they were trying to avoid the 66 of Ralph Vanderborst, and unfortunately, uh, Ralph Vanderborst is going to go for a spin there up on his roof. So let's jump in the cockpit and take a look at that instant replay here from the cockpit view of Ralph Vanderborst. Well, good thing is I think he's going to be okay, but that is going to take some more drivers there. They are going to have to come down onto pit road there, especially look at that 66 of Ralph Vanderborst. Let's get in close in as he is driving sideways right now. Oh man, his wheel is turned so far to the right to keep that machine straight. But so far, he's uh, so far so good. I should be able to make it down to pit road. Fingers crossed, he is smoking heavily though. That is not a bad combination. Sideways driving plus heavy black smoke. Eh. But as we speak, he is approaching pit entrance. I think we need to tell him, Sean, that we're not at Eldora. We're not doing dirt tracking. <laughs> oh, absolutely. He does slow it down to let everybody buy to avoid getting black flagged and getting an EOL, end of the line penalty. But he will finally be able to make it. But let's ride with him as until he makes it to his pit stop. Oh, he goes to the grass. He loses control of it. Still going nice and strong. right there Dave that's a good good driver man he is mowing the grass uh, for the eye racing to be honest Sean I don't know if I would have been able to handle that car he had his hands full but he did get it down on the pit road so good job there to the 66 of Ralph Vanderborst <laughs> absolutely and finally gets a brand new machine but now he is being shown a lap down so he will be uh, needing to get his lap back or working hard to get his lap back the hard way He'll be fighting Don Kidder Jr., Timothy McBrayer, and David White for the lucky dog. 
As we speak, he does roll off pit road, but going back up front, still being led by Hunter McDaniel. We have Ken Ladd second, uh, Garrett Robinson third, Marty Ray fourth, and Travis Pryor fifth. Well, actually, Travis did decide to stay out, so Travis will become the new race leader here on lap 11. Yep, he's got six laps, so he, he must know something the other drivers don't. He is going to stay out, take over the race lead leader lap here. We're going to keep an eye on him, see if he's going to come down pit road. Nope, he is going to stay out. So he is our new race leader here on lap 10, coming to lap 11. Yeah, we're going to get those bonus points for leading a lap. And man, Travis Dave has come a long way tonight from 22nd to 5th. That's a very long way. Well, I should scratch that from 22nd to 1st place because he now is the new leader officially on lap number 11. Very, very nicely done on his part. Six lap older tires compared to everybody else. Let's see how that affects him, if any. But that should not affect him whatsoever. But in the long run, it just might start to uh, affect him a little bit. But just fingers crossed and see how that affects him. And we do have a new viewer in the chat there. Dakota Craig. Good to see you. Top five so far is now jumbled up. Travis Pryor leading. Hunter McDaniel second. Ken Ladd third. Adam Eisenhower coming a very long way today from 25th to 4th as we speak. And Garrett Robinson still in fifth place. At the same time, looking at uh, Adam Eisenhower, he did only take two tires on pit road. The same as Hunter McDaniel up front. So we're going to see exactly how those strategies affect. Oh, actually, so I'm going to readjust that. We have, let's see. Three drivers in the top five took only two tires, namely Hunter McDaniel, Ken Ladd, and Adam Eisenhower, but the rest of the field did take four tires. So let's see exactly how they, this plays out in the long run, because that does make the car very unstable. It might make it loose, might make it tight. Uh, it just depends on the driver's driving styles. But we are across the start finish line this time by going one to green. Oh, look at that. We do have Dakota Craig rooting for uh, Garrett Robinson. And we also have Dustin Hart in the chat. Good to see you, buddy. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, let us know who you think will be the uh, tonight's race winner. Because uh, we do have a star-studded field. That means a lot of competition. A lot more take than give. And that's a lot more racing. So just let us know uh, who you think is going to win. And we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Well, on this restart, we do have Travis Pryor, the leader, starting on the outside line, ahead of the 86 of Adam Eisenhower. On the inside is a previous race leader, Hunter McDaniel, with the help of the 11 of Ken Ladd. And the driver is getting bunched up nice and tight. Uh, we also do have the 48 of Christopher Smith from the back of the pack here, running up the top 10, near the top 10, actually, after starting two spots below the top 10 in the 12th place spot. Andy Starcher going from 23rd to 13th. Uh, gaining 10 spots this far by going back up front. We are now entering turn 3, exiting turn 4 this time by Coin Green. The pace car is off. Travis puts it down the floor. He does try to catch him off guard. Hunter McDaniel does see it coming, but not quite. 11 of Ken Ladd right behind him on the inside line. Ken Ladd goes back, ties himself up the entrance to turn number one. It sees Adam Eisenhower right now. Comes on the 11 of Ken Ladd. He almost got loose. He almost touched, uh, touched the yellow line, but he was able to stay off that. So no harm there for the back in the pack. The 10 of Caleb Daniels battling the 97 of Gary Robinson. That's the sixth place position. Well, it looks like. Uh... Garrett's got a cheering squad out there. The Dirty South 276 is agreeing with Dakota. He is saying, go, Garrett, go. Garrett currently running back in sixth position there in the 97 machine. He's kind of fell back a little bit, but I, I look for him to be up front here later on when it matters. Speaking of up front, he is making moves. He is making up a lot of time. He gets on 65 of Marty Ray. That bumps him up to fourth place. And that's victim in line to 86 of Adam Eisenhower and right now Garrett not having too much rust whatsoever after missing last week's race at Auto Club Speedway so he still does have it and has a 65 of Marty Ray now ready to pounce on him to take those right to his which was the fifth place possession and Dave for the back in the pack 34 David Schneer and watching a battle between 48 of Christopher Smith and the 47 of Dirk Stanek. Well let's jump here on the cockpit view let people watch this battle here we are on 
The 34 of David Schneer as he is watching the battle in front of him. Oh, looks like there might have almost been contact there, but they keep it straight, keep it going, no harm, no foul. It is now David Schneer is looking to the outside of the 48 of Christopher Smith. Christopher Smith is going to shut that door, but look right there, 42. The 42 machine of Giuseppe is going to come in and take both positions away as he just powered it into the turn. And I have no idea where Giuseppe came from, but man, that was a run of a lifetime. Gains two spots in one lap, run up in front of 95 of uh, Chris Gillum here. Two new drivers trying to make some moves here. The first race of the, of the uh, night for them, of, of the season for them. And so far doing an amazing job. And I'm sitting in front of 40, 95 of Chris Gillum. We do have 95 and he's Dodger. 34 damage near side by side for the 13th place spot. The 19 Andy Dash Fortress backs off that wall. Not sneaking up on him, but he still comes with a big run. Looks the outside of 34. Oh, damage there. Yeah, these guys are going high, going low. They are trying everything they can do to pass it because this is one of them tracks where tire wear definitely plays a key. So as early in the run as possible, they are trying to uh, get. But I'll tell you what, the race leader is under fire right now. Is the 57 of Hunter McDaniel was able to get around the 81 of Travis Pryor, dropping them down into second there. But there's uh, right about six lap difference on their tires. So, But I tell you, Travis Pryor, he's doing a good job. But he is now under fire from the 11 of Ken Ladd. And Ken Ladd as well, an amazing driver. He has come a long way this season. And so far now, taking over the second place spot from the 81 of Travis Pryor. So point back to what I talked about early on. Those six lap older tires do actually make a difference here. Uh, Kentucky Steven run, he is behind the 11 of Ken Ladd, charging on his back bumper, but has another driver behind him, 97 of Darren Robinson. Well, Dave, some bad news about this right here. Sandwich behind a lot of drivers with newer tires. And so far, might be acting as a roadblock. But actually, he's keeping up uh, with pace uh, very well so far. Well, he, he's probably just trying to play a little pitch strategy here. We do have 109 laps remaining here at Kentucky Motor Speedway. So, hopefully, we'll get into some green flag pit stops here. Definitely show. And I tell you what, we got a request right now. Someone wanting to look at the pay job of the four of Michael Snow. So, let's take a look at it here. Ah, NASCAR Painter, he is the sponsor of the four, Michael Snow, he's out there in the chat. Let's show off that paint for him there, Sean. Oh, absolutely, that's here on the rear end, like NASCAR Painter on Facebook for free high racing designs. He says free high racing designs, everybody likes free, so definitely check out NASCAR Painter on Facebook. That's a well-dressed machine, man, that's uh, some bright red. Yes, we are going to circle around the car there, take a look at that hood. It's got a picture of the 24, the Chase Elliott Chevy uh, SS on there, but it's a good looking paint job. So definitely, guys, if you are uh, looking for a free paint job, check out NASCAR Painter on Facebook. And Dave, I front have a little bit of a battle between the 19 of Andy Starcher and the 31 of Andrew Riley. Andrew Riley loses the spot to the uh, 19 of Starcher, but... 31, still come back on the inside of the 19 of Andy Starcher side by side, they stay here off turn 4, the 19 of Starcher does propel past him and just might clear him before turn 1, yes, shut the door on him, let him know this is my position, I have claimed it, and nothing you can do about it, so he does go back down the inside line, and that does uh, secure the 31 of Andrew Riley in the 12th place position, this time by by Riley, still under fire from the 34 of David Schneer. Yeah, most definitely so go here and we're going to ride on with the 19 of uh, Andy Sturger here taking a look from his left front suspension is coming around the track you can see that tire going up and down so that that will just give these viewers a view of uh, the bumps that these drivers are fighting over here as you can see that left front tire just kind of bouncing up and down as he goes over the bumps here at 180 mile an hour Yeah, absolutely. These drivers do have to, uh, to uh, what do you call it, exercise extreme patience uh, with these machines because at these speeds, things do go from good to bad, bad to good in a hurry. 
And so far, these drivers doing an amazing job owning this track and not letting the track own them. The 19 of Andy does seem to be catching up to the 42 of Joseph Igwer. Joseph is in a battle of his own here. Three wide. For his own Dirk Stalag, a 10 of Caleb Daniels. He does back off the go back double wide. He falls back line behind 42 behind and 47 of Dirk. Cross over move here on the inside of 47 of Dirk. All the 10 of Daniels has been shot by the 47 of Stalag. Oh, Caleb have not having enough. Dave goes back to the inside of Dirk. Yeah, these guys are battling like it's the last lap, Sean, but they got to be careful because this battling, that's going to eat up them tires as we already seen the 10 of Caleb Daniels get real close to that wall. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, these guys got to be careful, but I understand they need this track position here on lap 26 of 128. Oh, that's absolutely right. And this is one of those tracks that you have to go for it in the beginning push while you can because uh, you won't be able to push for too long due to uh, the tire wear and the track will become slick it will become like driving on ice so the driver is definitely trying to take advantage of the tires while they can as we see the 19 of Andy Starcher getting around the 10 of Caleb Daniels now he's next to be the 47 of Dirk Stalaker for position number nine but Dirk still going as a strong rocking some left rear damage on that machine but so far so good not affecting him too much but going back up front, the 11 of Ken Lads, still second behind in the 57 Hunter McDaniel. Travis Pano bumped down to fourth place behind the 97 of Robinson. Yeah, but take a look at Hunter McDaniel. He's pulled out to about a 6 tenths lead over Ken Lad. So Hunter McDaniel's got this track down. So now these guys are playing catch up here. Uh, it uh, looks like Hunter McDaniel uh, moving. Oh, turn wreck right there. Oh, 11 of Ken Lad. And also a different driver, Garrett Robinson, involved in that. Oh man, what a wreck between the two drivers. Let's back it up on Garrett and see what happened. Well, we are going to pull up the Dre Broadcasting Instant Replay here. Focusing on the 97 of Garrett Robinson. Is him and Ken Ladd were battling just some unfortunate contact. Ken Ladd up on his side. Let's take a closer look here. From the cockpit view of the 97 of Garrett Robinson. Oh, is uh. Ken Ladd just goes up and over him. That's highly unfortunate for those drivers. That is going to be our third caution of the night. Oh, man. Very unfortunate indeed for every single driver involved. And that's, that gives uh, our second driver being on his lead lit and flipping in every single direction possible. Very unfortunate indeed. Uh, but great thing they still do have uh, their backup cars here. They should be able to get back on uh, on the track with brand new machines and staying competitive. As we speak, the level of Ken Lack going sideways down pit road. Gary Robinson as well down here. Both drivers smoking heavily. And pit road is now a busy place. Everybody going down to pit road. We have some drivers staying out. 31, Andrew Riley going to be taking over the race lead at uh, this time. Well, the good news is I think the 97 of Hunter McDaniel has his backup car. Is uh, He is down on pit road. There's the 11 of Ken Ladd just now making it down on pit road. Yep. And the race off of pit road is going to be the 57 of Hunter McDaniel. It's going to be Hunter McDaniel, Travis Pryor, Marty Ray, and Garrett Robinson. He had a great job by those drivers. And Dave, one driver, Mr. Heist, hide himself once again. Getting his lap back the hard way. Lucky dog back on the lead lap here for him on lap number 30. So a great job by Ralph Vanderforce. That's a, that's some bad news for everybody else out there on the lead lap. Because he will be spanking these boys and getting back what was rightfully his. Which was that race lead once again because he did have uh, triple ones across the board early on. On lap number one he had first place practice, first place qualifying and first place in the race. And so far that has been jacked up. It's 1-1-20 one, one, because it is being shown in the 20th place spot. And behind the pace car, we have some drivers who begin the wave around the pace car. We have the uh, 31 of Andrew Riley. Oh, Andrew Riley uh, is behind the pace car. But we, uh, we had the 03 of Kidder Jr. behind the pace car who was trying to get one lap back but decided to just pit in. So he will still stay two laps down, same as the 25 of Timothy McBrayer. Well, Dave. Going back up front to Andrew Riley. Andrew does have a lot of damage on that 31 machine of his. And at this point, he has 20 laps more on his tires compared to everybody else. I'm not sure, Dave, but something tells me it might be a little bit too late uh, for Andrew to pit in because I believe pit entrance is now closed at this point. 
Oh, he may be just trying to take that car to the back of the field, lead a couple of laps. He has led a lap, so he does get a bonus point for that. So we're going to keep an eye on him, see if he's going to stay out, because he's got about 20 laps more than every other driver out there. So this is this will be interesting if he stays out. Yeah, yep. just seeing how it affected Travis Pryor staying out with uh, six lap older tires. Just imagine what 20 laps will do. That's more than triple. Uh, so it's going to be quite some if he decides to stay out, but he most likely will not. But let's see here. We are in turn four. Yep, Dave, he is pulling off, and that will pass the race lead over back to Hunter McDaniel. Travis Pryor second, Marty Ray third, Gary Robinson fourth and Adam Eisenhower in the fifth place spot. And we have a new driver here who's trying to sneak into the top 10 and 19 of Andy Starcher. Andy Starcher from 23rd place to 11th as we speak. One more spot to getting up back into the uh, top 10. He will be starting behind the 47 of Dirk Stalker. And we are now back one to green here on this race. So we do have Hunter McDonough deciding to start on the outside with the help of the 97 of Garrett Robinson. On the inside is Travis Pry with the help of the 65 of Marty Ray. And Dave, status check on the 11th of Ken Ladd. Ken Ladd is being shown in the 15th place spot. He was involved in that last incident. That got the that was that brought up the caution. But his other victim there, the 97 of Garrett, is somehow still up front in fourth place. So that pit crew did an amazing job and brought that car back up to the front here within only a matter of laps on pit road. But we are now back one to green, going green. Yes, the pace car now brings them here into turn number three and four, getting ready to go. Green flag racing here for the Pit Light 125 at Kentucky Motor Speedway. Extreme Motorsports 99.com. Looking for a good league. They have everything you need. Road racing, truck racing, K&N, Xfinity, Cup. Here we go. Turn four, ready to go back. Green flag racing, pace car off. 57 of Hunter McDaniel gets hard on that throttle. 81 of Travis Pryor saw it coming. Same with the 97 of Garrett Robinson, who moves up into third position as these guys go into turn number one. Marty Ray and the 40 of Joshua Gillen were caught sleeping, but they do go back to single foul here on the exit of two. But the 40 of Joshua loses the spot to the 86 of Adam Eisenhower. Adam and a man on a mission trying to get back up to the front here to fight those drivers for that race lead. As we speak, we do have the 97 Robinson all over the 81 of Travis Pry. He is trying to play mind games. It goes to the inside of him on the front stretch, entering turn number one. But the person starts finish line. They stay side by side, neck and neck. And Robinson will this light nose, entering turn one. And Garrett did take over the second place spot of the 81 of Pry. But Pry does cross out and on the exit of two. Side by side they go on the back stretch. Drive is pride, drives it in hard, entering turn number three, 97 Robinson, that's short, short, he might have a slingshot off turn four, 81, Pryor goes back high, cross over with the 97 Robinson, no, he blocks him, he, he blocks him to maintain the second place spot, nicely done, but he is moved up the track by Robinson. <laughs> well, Dave, it all comes down to uh, pushing while you can, once those tires are gone, you won't be able to make passes. It's still gonna come down to single foul racing. They want to press it doing the first over move on the 97 Robinson side by side. They stay and return three. Well, I'll tell you, I, I know somebody's real happy to see this right now, and that's gonna be the 57 or Hunter McDaniel. Why these guys are battling, he's already pulled out six tenths of a lead. But look behind him, here comes the 65 of Marty Ray. He is looking to get involved in this battle as well. Yeah, but these two drivers, Travis Pryor and Robinson, most likely have burned up their stuff from the side by side they've been doing for the past uh, few laps. And I just speak that I said Robinson still look at the inside of Travis Pryor. They kind of have enough of each other. They're still going at it, trying to uh, maintain the second place spot. But the uh, 57 of Hunter McDonough still pulling away like you talked about. And Marty Ray enjoying this battle uh, between them. Yeah, Hunter McDaniel now up almost to a full second ahead. So he is just loving watching this battle in his mirror. But I tell you, this is exciting watching this battle between the 81 of Travis Pryor and the 97 of Garrett Robinson. I bet you uh, Marty Ray's got a smile on his face because he's just waiting for one of them to make a mistake. Speaking of mistakes, 81 Pryor sideways off turn four. Oh man, he was somehow able to uh, keep it together and the caution flies on lap number 37. We'll back up to him, might have been involved. 
That looks like that is going to involve the 03 of Don Kidder Jr. here as we pull up the Dre Broadcasting Instant Replay. So let's take a rewind here and see what happened here as we focus on the 03 of Don Kidder Jr. He was racing side by side with the 36 of Adam Eisenhower. Contact made and Don Kidder Jr. up into the outside wall. Oh, I think he may have blew his motor there. So that's oddly unfortunate there for the 03 of Don Kidder Jr. Yeah, very unfortunate indeed for every single driver involved, Jason Eisenhower and Don Kidder himself. And yeah, Don Kidder did blow his motor and is getting towed down to pit road as we speak. Also, we do have David White on pit road. David White has been on pit road for the past 33 laps. Uh, not sure what happened to David White, but he did have a rough start to tonight's race. And by the looks of it, his machine is beat up in every way possible. So he, his uh, pit crew is hard at work trying their best to uh, straighten that machine out so it can be able to stay competitive with everybody else here once uh, they're done with it. But going back up front, Gary Robinson taking over the race lead here on lap number 39, deciding to stay out with the 10 of Caleb Dennis, but everybody else pitting in. Look at that, David. Driver taking it away around the pace car 31 of Andrew Riley back on the lead lap on lap 39. And that was some awesome racing on uh, everybody's part here. Uh, this part has been an amazing race. And so far, uh, Travis Pryor does have two uh, cheer, uh, cheerleaders, I guess. Yeah, two fans in the chat, Patty as usual. And also, I did see Jay Pryor. Uh, thank you for watching, Jay. I believe, I'm not sure if I called you out, but uh, it's very, very good to see you. Well, I'm not sure what happened, but the 65 of Marty Ray actually beat the 57 of Hunter McDaniel off of Pitt Road. Also, moving up into the fifth position, there's the 11 of Ken Ladd back up front, close to the front there. Looking at it right now, Dave, it was a difference in pit strategy between Marty Ray and Hunter McDaniel, uh, which means Marty Ray did take only two tires and a full tank of gas compared to Hunter, who took four tires the full tank of gas and that passes the race it over to the 10 of Caleb Daniels as 97 Robinson did go down pit road uh, to get some service and that's going to give Caleb Daniels about nine laps more on his tires compared to the rest of the field that is not good well maybe like Andrew Riley he just might be you know trying to lead some laps and will be going down pit road uh, maybe this time by, because if he doesn't go down this time by, it will be a little bit too late. Uh, so he's going to have no choice uh, but to stay out. And we do have 19 of Andy Starch finally making his appearance into the top 10 from 23rd place to 8th as we speak. The 4 of Michael Snow from 14th to 9th. We do have the 95 of Chris Gillum from 13th to 11th. Travis Pryor back in the 12th place spot. David Schneer, 13th. Rick Mason from 26th uh, to 14th. I haven't spoken much of Rick Mason, but he also knows how to get the job done. We have Gary Wubot from 19th to 15th. And for the back in the pack here, we do have some drafts. We'll be racing for the lucky dog of Giuseppe Higuera, Timothy McBrayer, and all three of Kitter Jr. Well, I want to take this time, ladies and gentlemen. This You are watching the Extreme Motorsports 99.com. Kit Pro K&N Series sponsored by Eyeball.co. That's right. The graphics you are seeing on the screen was created by iRacing Broadcasting Broadcasting Overlay Graphics. So definitely give them a check out if it's something you're interested in. Uh, he does awesome graphic work. So check him out. That's Eyeball.co. I B O G dot C O. And we are now back one to green, being led by the 10 of Caleb Dennis, who did decide to stay out. He will be, ha uh, be assisted by the 57 of Hunter McDaniel on this restart on the inside line. On the outside is 65 of Marty Ray with the 11 of Ken Ladd, making uh, another appearance here back in the top five after having a little bit of a wrap-up uh, during the last two cautions. Uh, yeah, the last two cautions. He was involved in the incident with the 97 of Robinson, but he is now finally back up here in the top five, going green this time by Ralph Van der Force being shown sixth, Adam Eisenhower fifth, Andy Starcher seventh, Michael Snow eighth, Joshua Gillen ninth, and the 95 of Chris Gillum 
in the 10th place spot. The driver's getting bunched up nice and tight. We do have the uh, brakes uh, paint scheme by the 10 of Caleb Dennis. That's Napa brakes going green this time by. Uh, pace car is off. The 10 of Daniel still holding pace speed. He puts down the floor. He does catch him off guard. It's by Marty Ray. Sees it coming. 11 of Ken Ladd right behind him. Hunting Jenner crosses quite a bit. And he's just added now right behind Hunting Daniel. And Marty Ray will stay high. Decides not block the inside. Will stay high to let this. For example, Hunting Jenner occupy his inside. And Adam Eisenhower is occupying the inside of the 11 of Ken Ladd. And speaking of Ken Ladd, his machine seems to heat up in the front. I'm not sure if. Yep, Ken Ladd does have some damage on the front end of that machine, but so far, somehow going nice and strong. These days can take a beating, but going back up front, Hans Mignano and Marty Ray battling side by side for second place. For the back of the pack, day 48 of Chris Smith behind the host we have Don Kidder Jr. Don Kidder watching a battle between. 97 Robinson and 34 David Schneer. Robinson one shuffle back to the outside line due to staying out on the caution uh, to lead a lap. And was shuffled back to 13th place, but now trying to get back up towards the front as we have some contact. It was between the uh, 95 of Gillum and the 4 of Michael Snow, but no harm there. It did slow them down quite a bit, but the super button is strong. Yeah, most definitely here. 85 laps to go here in Kentucky. We are going to take this chance for our first commercial break of the night. Give everyone a chance to refill their snack and refill their drinks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pit Life 125 for round number 8 of the Extreme Motorsports 99 Pro KNN Series, brought to you by iRacing Broadcast Overlay and Graphics iBog. Check them out at ibog.co with Jason Allison. Well, going back to the race, we are we now do have a new race leader, Hunter McDaniel, Marty Ray being shown second, Adam Eisenhower third, Ken Land fourth, and Joshua Gillen in the fifth place spot. And if you guys remember correctly, the 10 of Caleb Daniels did decide to stay out the last caution, which gave him 9 lap order tires. Well, we see who has 9 lap order tires at this point. And so far, it's not working out in his favor. And he is now being shown. He's bumped down to 10th place from 1st place. So those tires definitely are very, very important. But he will try uh, his best to get back in the groove here. He's now riding behind the Ralph Fanda for the back in the pack. We do have the five of Gary Wubosh behind 36 of Jason Eisenhower, who is following the four of Michael Snow. 
And today we have two drivers race for the lucky dog, the 42 of Giuseppe Higuera and the 47 of Derek Stalicker. Actually, it looks like Dirk has now been put down two laps. So Giuseppe is the only driver lap down, but so far that means Dirk Stalicker and now Timothy McBrayer are now racing for position as they are two laps down 19th and 20th place. But going back up front, Marty Ray now being shown about two tenths behind the leader Hunter McDaniel. And if you remember correctly, Marty Ray did win his first race of the season last week at Auto Club and he's hungry to have his second win here in the Pro Can N series. And Hunter McDaniel as well does have one win in his belt. And now Adam trying to do the exact same thing. And speaking of Adam Eisen, he is being shot about eight tenths behind Hunter McDaniel and Marty Ray. And the more they battle, if they do battle, they will pull him in. And that's absolutely right there, Pat T. Hunter McDaniel is getting better and better every single week. That's bad news for Cody McFadden. For the back of the pack, Dave David Schneer getting around the 10 of Caleb Daniels. He does make the pass successfully against him. And that bumps Caleb down to 12th place and uh, David Schneer up into the 11th place position. And David still not done. His next victim in life of position is 95 of Chris Gillum, who's watching a battle in front of him between the 19 of Starcher and 66 of Ralph Vanderforst. And Dave, Ralph Vanderforst has had some bad luck tonight with the high side. So far has seemed to uh, have made friends with the uh, turn wall, turn four wall. So as we speak, he does uh, have some right front damage on that machine. That was not there the last time I checked on him. So he definitely did make some contact with one of the walls out there. But he does finally make a pass against the 19 of Andy Starcher. And now Andy trying his best to regroup. Well, let's take a look here at our mid-race race report. So far, we have had four cautions, seven lead changes tonight. So far, our fastest lap was put down by our race leader, Hunter McDaniel, with a 30.078, almost a 29-second lap time here in Kentucky. Yeah, very, very fast lap indeed. And still under pressure from Marty Ray. Marty Ray just getting closer and closer with every single lap. And right behind them, 40 of Joshua Gillen riding behind the 11 of Ken Ladd. Surprisingly, Ken Ladd's damage is not affecting him too much whatsoever, if any, actually. And he is still being able to keep up pace. He's uh, having some good lap times, competitive lap times. 40 of Joshua trying to make a move on the outside. He backs off. That one did sneak up on him, but he was able to stay off of it. Great job by the 40 of Joshua Gillen. For the back of the pack, we have 36 of Jason Eisenhower uh, riding behind the uh, 18 of Rick Mason. And Rick Mason has kept a low profile here in tonight's race, but has come a long way so far. Sean, I'm actually looking. Look who has found each other again. The 97 of Derek Robinson, the 81 of Travis Pryor. They are battling it out for that sixth position again, as we've seen them battling real hard uh, for, closer to the front of the race. But they have found each other again, and once again, they are battling each other hard here at Kentucky. <laughs> oh, absolutely great rivals here tonight. At Kentucky Speedway for round number eight, and so far Travis trying to set up the 97 of Robinson again. The best he can, he goes back up high. Garrett Robinson, uh, most likely driving this rear view to find a way to. Uh, oh, he went prior, had to back off. He got close to the left rear of the 97 of Robinson. That is a very bad thing. When he wants to tap the left rear, uh, that will send the other car sideways. So it was a great job by Travis backing up in time to avoid causing trouble. And as we speak, he is still charging all over 97 Robinson on the front stretch. You can see right now as Travis goes down the track, so does Garrett Robinson when Pryor goes up the track. Garrett doing the exact same thing. That does let you know he is driving his rearview mirror, not knowing it. But he is uh, doing exactly what the 81 of Pryor behind him is doing. speaking the 81 of Pryor is looking at the outside of the Robinson while dropping off the 40 of Gillen. Yeah, we saw the 40 of Gillen get a little sideways. That caused the 97 of Garrett Robinson to have to check up. That allowed the 81 of Travis Pryor to get to the outside here. As now Travis Pryor is... Oh! Contact made between him and the 40. No yellow... Oh, there's the yellow flag. Oh, man. Contact between the 40 of Joshua Gillen and the 81 of Travis Pryor. Let's back it up on Joshua and see what happened. 
Well, as we take a look here at Joshua Gillen, it's the 81 of Travis Pryor down to the inside. Contact made on the right rear. Travis Pryor is going to keep it going, but Joshua Gillen's going to get spun around with just minor damage. So this will just give everybody a chance with 22 laps to uh, come down pit road, get some fresh stickers. Because unlike NASCAR, these guys don't have a set number of tires. They have unlimited tires here in Kentucky. Oh, Pryor gets hard into the brakes. He goes sideways on the track off turn two. Everybody was able to stay out of that one. Nice save by everybody. And man, those are some hard breaks on Travis Pryor, but uh, he will get out of that and scratched. Oh, he, he gets around the 95 of Chris Gillen. That was almost ugly again, but the R will be going down the road this time by once again to get that fresh, uh, fresh set. Uh, of tires and that's a good thing to take advantage of uh, the unlimited amount of tires these guys can take uh, all race long being led by Hunter McDaniel and everybody will follow him down pit road looks like we have some drivers deciding to stay out we have 47 of Dirk Stalker staying out all three Don Kittery Jr. as well staying out uh, to get one lap back Don Kittery is being shown about four laps down so once he gets the wave run, he will be back to three laps down. The 47 of uh, Dirk Stalker getting the wave run, the pace car back on the uh, back one lap down. Uh, this time by we have one more drive behind the pace car. It's going to be 59 of uh, David Wines. David Wine finally back on the track, being shown 38 laps down. His pit crew was finally able uh, to get that machine back up and running. And the race off pit road, believe it or not, is going to be to the 97 of Garrett Robinson. Marty Ray second, Hunter McDaniel third, Adam Eisenhower fourth, and Ken Ladd all off pit road. Your top five right now. Garrett fresh off that vacation. And man, spanking these boys here tonight. He did find his way for the back of the pack after being involved in the incident there early on. But he was somehow able to make his way back up to the front and now we'll be taking over the race lead once we cross the start finish line let's see he has the 25 timothy mcbrayer andrew riley don kidder and david white all behind the pace car but david white don kidder 31 Andrew riley and 25 brayer all four of them actually going down pit road so garrett robinson taking over the race lead at uh, this time by great job by garrett robinson he has come a long way in tonight's race and it's not over until it's over for him. So we'll try his best to lead as many laps as possible. Let's see what the 57 Hunter McDaniel, Marty Ray, Adam Eisen, our Ken Ladd, and Ralph Vanderforst have to say about that. And this is lap 63. The lights on the pace car are still turned on. So this does give us some time for a race interview. Let's focus on the 95 of Chris Gillum. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by a new driver tonight up in the Dre Broadcasting booth, the 95 of Chris Gillum. Get up there, Chris. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing good. Doing good. Well, buddy, it's very, very good to see you here tonight making your first appearance this season with the Extreme Motorsports 99 Pro k and Series. But how's your experience so far? How's been your experience in practice and, and qualifying? It's been pretty good, uh... I got. I was involved in that wreck early, earlier, but uh, you know, pretty good so far. Oh, ten, four, yeah, absolutely. I do remember you getting involved in the incident, and I'm, I am glad that you were able uh, to make up a lot of time, make up all that time, and make up even more time because you are now almost sneaking up into the top five behind the eleven of Ken Ladd. And uh, Chris, how's the competition looking from your end? Oh, uh, we got some fast guys up here. Uh, I'm just gonna, just gonna try and keep on racing and see where I finish. Hopefully, top ten. I'll be happy with that. Oh, ten for Chris. Well, buddy, you have come a long way in tonight's race. You did start thirteenth. You got involved in a wreck got back down there below the top 20 and now back up to the top 10 so you've been doing things right keep doing exactly what you're doing and make your first race here tonight count and spank these boys and have your first win man good luck <laughs> thanks thanks for having me 
And that was a 95 of Chris Gillum, currently in the sixth place position. But we are now back one to green, being led by Garrett Robinson, who decides to start on the outside line ahead of the 86 of Adam Eisenhower. On the inside is Marty Ray with the help of the 57 of Hunter McDaniel. Everybody now back on the exact same pitch strategy. Four tires, full tank of gas. What can possibly go wrong? Let's see exactly how these guys are going to handle the, the new uh, set of fresh stickers. Going green this time by exiting turn four. Well, Dave, do the honors. As the pace car dips down into pit road, race leader 97 Garrett Robinson waits. He puts down the throttle. Take Adam Eisenhower saw it coming. Marty Ray saw it coming. But 57 or Hunter McDaniel seemed like he just could not get up as he has now got the 95 of Chris Gillum on the outside. But they are going to go back here single file. And Hunter McDaniel is going to keep the fourth position. Yep, and Marty Ray in the turn was flirting with that apron, but was somehow able to stay off of it and maintain his second place spot against the 86 of Adam Eisenhower. And now his next victim is the leader 97 of Garrett Robinson. Garrett getting all that fresh, clean air, nice clean air. And this just might be a good thing for Garrett Robinson, but a bad thing for everybody else behind them. Because so far his lead just keeps getting nothing but bigger with every single lap. And for the back in the pack of 40, Joshua Ballin takes the rough runner force side by side for the eighth place spot. The 40 of Josh does for short off turn two. And Ralph will benefit from that. He's watching right between the 10 of Caleb Daniels and the 11 of Ken Lang. Ken Lott, Caleb Dennis going side by side throughout this front stretch. Ken Lott leading a big nose. Chris Start finish line will be shown the sixth place spot. The 10 of Dennis down to seventh place. Still side by side they go. The 40 of Joshua Gillen poking his nose into this battle inside the 10 of Caleb Daniels on the inside. The 40 of Gillen was able to get around the 10 of Caleb Dennis. Now his next victim is the 11 of Ken Lott. Eleven of Ken Ladd as well, man. He is on a mission to try and get back out to the front, get out to the front, back in the top five, so I can be able to uh, battle with these guys and hopefully lead a couple of laps. And so far, he is uh, catching up to his next victims in line for position the 95 of Chris Gillum and the 86 of Adam Eisenhower. Well, I'm taking a look here, Sean. We are beyond the halfway point, so we are 61 laps remaining here of 128. Here for the Pit Light 125, Extreme Motorsports 99.com, Pro k &N Series, sponsored by Eyeball. Oh, man. And Dave, we had a lead change between Garrett and Marty Ray. Marty Ray was able to get around Garrett, but off turn two, Garrett did pounce back and got around him again and took back the race lead back away from Marty Ray. And now Garrett is uh, all over, or is being helped by Hunter McDaniel, who is going back the inside. He sets him up, he used him, and then overtakes and betrays him at the last second. They'll be side by side entering turn one. Well, Sean, as they say, you have friends off the track, you have no friends on the track. It's every man for himself. It's Hunter McDaniel is going to come away with the race lead here, but they are still side by side here coming through turns three and four. Yep, and Marty Ray right now watching this battle for the race lead. Oh, they almost made contact. They were able to stay off each other nicely done. And oh, the 97 represent that's chopped the nose off of Hunter McDaniel. That was way too close for comfort. Oh man, that could have been ugly, but that was a nice uh, drive by both drivers, Hunter McDaniel and Robinson, doing what he has to do, doing what it takes to maintain that race lead. This is a very, very strict field here tonight, so you do have to do what you have to do to get the job done. If you have to block, you have to block on lap one to maintain that race lead. That's all part of racing. For the back of the pack, the 10 of Caleb Dennis being challenged by the 19 of Andy Starcher for eight. Yeah, they are battling while the 66 there of Ralph Vandervoort, we saw in an earlier incident, he was on his roof, has moved that back into the top 10, now running in the 8th position, but he's got some stiff competition there because Caleb Daniels has kind of fallen back as the 48 of Christopher Smith is now looking to try to get around him, but Caleb Daniels is going to keep that 11th spot, uh, the 10th spot for just right now. And speaking of Christopher Smith, Dave, Chris Smith has had the damage he has so far. I mean, he has a ding in his rear end. Looks like he backed into some kind of pole. Uh, 
but he has had that damage all race long uh, tonight by the looks of it. And so far, still rocking it nice and strong. He does a 34 of Schneer approaching, but a very fast rate. Schneer backed off, but his car did push off the exit of two. And right now, touching the inside of the 10 of Daniels. Nope, he doesn't have it, doesn't have enough by the looks of it. And the 10 of Daniels will propel past him off the exit of turn four. And David Schneer going to the outside, trying to make the pass. Yeah, taking a look here, we got a camera view here, ladies and gentlemen, from the spotter stand. We are going to take a look here as these guys go a lap or two here. Taking a look and see at what these spotters see as they go around the track here. So, this is just another interesting view here. As we say, this is just what the spotters are seeing. what the, How they're being able to call out to their drivers to let them know, you know, who's around them, who's making the moves. Yeah, but those speeds, those spotters do come in handy, man. You don't want to... Uh, you can't really do much. You don't want to look left or right when doing 190 plus miles an hour at most tracks. Uh, that is a, a recipe for disaster because uh, the track it does sneak up on these drivers of the walls and everything. There's so much going on that it, could be, it would be very difficult if those spotters didn't exist. And Dave, that 48 of Chris Smith now trying to hold off the 03 of Don Kidder Jr. Don Kidder still being shown four laps down. And Chris Smith now pouncing on the 34 of David Schneer. Forty-eight Chris Smith does propel past the exit of two thirty-four. David Schneer comes up with a huge run as well. They do stay neck and neck. But forty-eight of uh, Chris Smith moves this light nose entering turn three and tosses it in very, very hard. And off turn four, he just might have a slingshot. Well, let's go back up front here, check in on our leaders, Garrett Smith now, or Garrett Robinson, I'm sorry, now up to four tenths of lead over the 65 of Marty Ray, but Marty Ray is now under fire from the 57 of Hunter McDaniel and the 86 of Adam Eisenhower as they are right there ready to pounce here. They have got 15 laps since their last pit stop, lap 77, 52 laps remaining. I think if this stays green, we should be able to do it on one more pit stop, I believe, Sean. Yep, yeah, that sounds absolutely right. Oh, the caution flies on lap 78. We've got to back up to see might have been involved. That's going to be the 34 of David Schneer here as we pull up the Dre Broadcasting Instant Replay. We are going to focus on the 34 of David Schneer. See if we can see exactly what happened and brought out that caution as he was battling door to door with the 34 or 03 of Don Kidder. Don Kidder kind of blinked out there. He disappeared from my screen there for a second. And then uh, the 34 of David Schneer just goes around into the grass. Eh, just cutting a little bit of grass. Doesn't look like there's too much damage to his car. Single car spin. So we are going to get them all lined back up and ready to go at it again here as we are now 50 laps remaining. Yep, and going back up front, Garrett Robinson still in the race lead, Marty Ray second, Hunter McDaniel third, Adam Eisenhower fourth, and Chris Gillum in the fifth place spot. And Dave, I should admit, man, before the caution came out, Marty Ray was hoping this caution did not come out, because Dave, I noticed Garrett was fading a little bit, fading away in that long run, and Marty Ray was catching up to him every single lap. Well, we're going to find out because these guys are going to come down on pit road. So here's some pit strategy. Are you going to take two tires? Are you going to take four? Is uh, Garrett Robinson now leading him down on the pit road? Yeah, two tires just might not be the way to go. We do still have 50 laps remaining. I mean, we did see some two tire heroes uh, early on in the race uh, and it did work out for them. It actually wasn't as bad as, you know, I would have thought. Uh, we're gonna see exactly how these drivers uh, go with this pit strategy. And so as we speak, he does lead everybody down. Peter, we have some drivers staying out. It's a lap cars. That's going to be Rick Mason on pit road, Travis Pryor, Ken La uh, Don Kidder Jr., uh, Andrew Riley, Giuseppe Higuera, David White, Timothy McGrayer. Uh, all these drivers staying out. And Travis Pryor, Travis Pryor is a lap down. I didn't notice that. I thought he was on the lead lap. But Travis is a lap down, so he most likely is going to be getting the wave round uh, this time by. Well, it looks like he made a green flag pit stop that we missed because he, he pitted just three laps ago. So he is on a uh, fresh fresh set of tires here. So he was two laps down, but once he gets around that pace car, he'll be one lap down. 
So he was not hope he was hoping not to see this. He wanted to see some green flag pit stops. Oh yeah, absolutely. So because of that, he will get the wave around, but he will be sent to the back of the pack. Well, he's gonna have to do it all over again. Very unfortunate indeed for Travis Pryor, but he knows how to get the job done. So I'm not not too worried about him whatsoever. Uh, he will be back up front in no time. But going back up front, Garrett Robinson still being shown as a leader and a lot of lap traffic pitting in this time by. We have Giuseppe Guerra, Timothy McBrayer, Andrew Riley, and Don Kidder Jr. pitting in as we speak of 47 of Dirk Staliger joining them uh, down pit road. And Dirk Staliger is being shown on the lead lap in the 16th place position by just going back down pit road. Uh, to get more tires and top off that gas uh, before the uh, green flag flies but going back up front looks like the lights of the pace car are still turned on so this does give us some time for a race interview uh, let's focus on the let's see let's focus on the uh, the 10 of Caleb Daniels Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are being joined by the 10 of Caleb Daniels representing Double C Motorsports. Get a call up there, Caleb. How's it going, buddy? Good, how are you? Good. Oh, buddy, it's been way too long, but so far in tonight's race, man, doing an amazing job. You did have an amazing appearance uh, last week as well at uh, Auto Club Speed. But how's the race going so far? Oh, that's going good. I think the car's all right. We got maybe top 10. That's about it. Them front runner guys, I can't really hang with them. Try to stay out on that two cautions ago to get some, get a lap led at least in the night's race. So maybe it would go a little bit better. Oh, 10 4, buddy. We do uh, wish you the best of luck. And uh, Caleb, I mean, we noticed uh, in that long run that you were kind of fading away a little bit. How's the track feeling? How's the machine uh, changing with uh, the more you put uh, laps on the tires? It's getting real tight. I've noticed that going up in the center of the track is a little bit better. Whenever my tires get at about 10 or 15 laps on the tires, I like to go in the center of the track, working better. Oh, 10 for buddy. Well, man, we are glad that you are adapting to this track, man. You say you have a top 10 car. I think you have a top three car tonight, man. Bring it home. Have your first win of the season here. The Extreme Motorsports 99 Pro Can and Series. It is very, very good to see you every single week because you're always improving. And that's exactly what we like to see. Oh, buddy, you are now back one to green, going green this time by. So keep doing exactly what you're doing. And see you in Victory Lane. Make us proud. All right. Thank you, man. Well, as the pace car now brings them here into turn number three, turn four, ready to go, green flag racing. So for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have had six cautions here tonight at Kentucky. We are being led by the 97 of Garrett Robinson, electing to start on the outside. 57, Hunter McDaniel on the inside. Adam Eisenhower, Chris Gillum on the second row, pace car off, 97 of Garrett Robinson puts the pedal down, jumps out to a commanding lead as the 95 of Josh or uh, Chris Gillum now trying to challenge the 57 of Hunter McDaniel. And Chris Gillum now making his uh, his highest appearance here in the top three so far. He has the 86 of Eisenhower on his inside line. And Robinson, man, wasn't playing any games on that restart. He has increased his lead. Uh, to a very, very, uh, about seven tenths of a second against second place driver Hunter McDaniel. Oh, Hunter does push way wide. 95 of Chris Gillum goes to the inside. 86 of Adam, three wide in the middle. Gives him to be done on the outside line. Gonna go up from second place to fourth place in one lap. And 95 of Chris Gillum right now trying to hold up the 86 of Eisenhower. Eisenhower looks to the inside of him and overtakes him off the exit of two. So it takes one little mistake. We saw the 57 of Hunter McDaniel make that mistake. He went from second back to fourth. So now he has got to fight back here. Don't know that much sliding, man. That's that's a lot of wear on those tires here with just 44 laps remaining. Oh, absolutely. That side was actually always looks pretty, but it's very, very bad for those tires. As we speak, Hunter McDaniel is still side by side with Chris Gillum. Chris Gillum does back off and lets him have it. And that bounced Hunter up to third place and Chris back down to fourth place position. And now let's see, Adam has now decreased the lead over Garrett from 
nine tenths of a second down to about seven tenths uh, of a second. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we do have about, let's see, 42 laps remaining on lap 86. We'll take our second commercial break of tonight's race so you guys can get your second round of popcorn and refreshments. We'll be right back. So stay tuned. Don't let your first date be your last. Visit People Against Distracted Driving at PADD.org. I racing you, one of the best. You got them for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt. The world of outlaws. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Pit Light 125 for round 8 of the Extreme Motorsports 99 Pro k n Series brought to you by iRacing Broadcast Overlay and Graphics iBog. Check them out at ibog.co and that's ibog.co with Jason Allison. Well, going back to the race, we are under caution and we do have a new leader, the 10 of Caleb Daniels deciding to stay out. 48, Christopher Smith second, Jason Eisenhower third, Adam Eisenhower, his brother right behind him, fourth. And Hunter McDaniel in the fifth place spot so far, rounding up the uh, top five. And during the caution, a lot of drivers actually involved in the incident. We had Rick Mason, Don Kidder, Travis Pryor, Andrew Riley all involved uh, in the caution. And uh, the incident that brought the caution. Uh, so those drivers are now for the back of the pack. There we have Travis Pryor now being shot about three laps down due to the incident. We have Don Kidder still four laps down. Andrew Riley four laps down as well. Rick Mason two laps down and rolling off pit road as we speak. So that did really affect these drivers. But uh, going back up front, uh, we are now back one to green. The 10 of Daniel still deciding to stay out with the help of the 36 of Jason Eisenhower behind him. 
Christopher Smith, and the 86 of Adam Eisenhower starting the outside line. So, so far, the top three drivers have nine lap older tires uh, compared to everybody else, namely Caleb Daniels, Christopher Smith, and Jason Eisenhower. Well, Dave, from the past race that we've had uh, this season with the Pro Can N series, yeah, the Extreme Motorsports 99, uh, the pit, since the pit window was 50%, 50 of the Pro Can N cars, we did see the pit window being uh, all the way from laps 27 through 35. But now we have 39 laps remaining here in tonight's race. We're going to have 38 once the green flag flies. So, Dave, something tells me we, we do not need any more pit stops. Well, we'll find out, Sean. They may need it. Just depends on how hard they race, how or how much fuel they can save. So, we're gonna find out. As uh, you said, here we come into turn number four. Pace car bringing them. Caleb Daniels, the man out front. Christopher Smith on the outside. Jason Eisenhower, Adam Eisenhower, side by side here as they come down. Caleb Daniels hard on that throttle, jumps out to a good lead. Forty-eight. Uh, Chris Smith saw it coming. Meanwhile, the Eisenhowers are both battling it out for that third position. Hunter McJohnny behind 36 of Jason Eisenhower, but now under pressure from the 65 of Marty Ray for that fourth place spot. Adam Eisenhower, new tires making moves as we speak. But driver who smacked the wall, the 11 of Ken Ladd, losing spots left and right, lost all his speed, all his momentum, a lot more spots being lost. By the 11 of Ladd, he almost gets to the 6 of Robert Van Force. They do stay off each other, but Ken Ladd getting back up to speed, trying to make up as much time as he can to counter for that mistake. And right now, doing an amazing job holding off Ralph Van der Force uh, for the most part. Uh, going back up front, Adam now being shown all the way up to second place. Challenging the leader now once he gets up to him. The 10 of Caleb Daniels. But so far, Adam Daniels up 65 with Marty Ray to worry about. And Marty Ray did go away wide. Hunter did, did occupy his inside and took away the third place spot away from Marty Ray. But Marty Ray pouncing back, trying to make a move on the outside line. Making a pass on the outside is very difficult. It's not impossible, but it's a very, very difficult thing to do. And so far, Marty Ray trying to do just that. But Hunter does get around him and lose the door from the 97 of Robinson. Oh, Marty Ray and Robinson almost got together, but they were able to stay off each other. But I was just speaking of 965 of Marty Ray. Dave is losing a lot of time every single lap. And looking at it right now, Dave, it most likely is because he took three tires. Uh, three tires. Two tires. So we have three drives in top five. We have Adam Eisen, Hunter McDaniel, and also Marty Ray himself, who took three tires. Uh, two tires. Yes, we got a battle up here for a second. Hunter McDaniel. Oh! Big contact caution with the Adam Eisenhower up in uh, Garrett Robinson as we are going to pull up the Dre Broadcasting Replay and take a look at that. Let's pull up the Dre Broadcasting as I'm going to rewind it here and see exactly what happened. The 86 and the 97 getting into each other. Oh, let's see if we can see it from a different view here. Yeah, it uh, looked like 97 of Garrett Robinson trying to go around the outside with the 57 of Hunter McDaniel. Just unfortunate contact there between him and the 86, and that's going to that's gonna cause a lot of damage. Yep, 97's got a blown engine. Oh, man. Also involved the 48 of Chris Smith, 11 of Ken Ladd got collected in it. Robinson himself and also Schneer was up, able to uh, uh, to avoid that for the most part. I mean, that did involve a lot of drivers and once again, very unfortunate indeed for every single driver involved. Now at this point, I am very sure everybody's going to be able to make it, uh, make it on gas if they pit in. Going back up from the 10 of Daniels, our leader does lead everybody down pit road and everybody will follow him this time by Jason Eisenhower, Dirk Stalicker. And we have some drivers staying out. The drivers who were lapped down of Timothy McBrayer, Travis Pryor, Andrew Riley, and Rick Mason, including David White, uh, staying out uh, this time by because the pit, pit road is not open uh, for them yet.
Oh, Dave, looking at Travis Pryor right now, he does have a lot of heavy damage on that machine. Most likely might be out uh, of backup cars. Uh, man, that is very unfortunate indeed for Travis Pryor. Yeah, most definitely. Taking a look here off pit road, Marty Ray is going to be the first one off pit road. Joshua Gillen there in second. Hunter McDaniel moving up into third. Caleb Daniels fourth. And Andy Starcher making his way into the top five, now in the fifth position. Yeah, absolutely. Great job by the race off pit road. Those drivers, looking at Travis Pryor, he actually was involved in the incident that brought a caution uh, there with the 11 of Ken Ladd, 97 of Robinson. So uh, he might be pitting in. Nope, he decided to stay out one more lap. So yeah, but that's going to be some bad news for Travis Pryor. I'm not sure if we talked about Travis Pryor during that incident there. But now they're the race leaders. Let's see, Robinson. But well, we're about to cross our fish line, so fingers crossed. Yep, so Marty Ray taking over the race lead. Joshua Gillen second, Hunter McDaniel third, Caleb Daniels fourth, and Andy Starch making his first appearance in the top five. So far, rounding up the top five. Yeah, you know, Sean, taking a look at my math here with Garrett Robinson still down on pit road, I do believe. Let me take a look here. Uh, looks like Hunter McDaniel is going to be the guy that lead the most laps tonight as he has led 46 with 32 laps remaining. Uh, Marty Ray leading four laps. Travis Pryor leading eight. And Daniels there, Caleb Daniels leading 13. Garrett Robinson leading 24 laps. Also, Angel Riley has led one lap as well. Oh, man. Congratulations for all those drivers leading some laps here. Trying to get those uh, bonus points uh, for leading a lap. Very nicely done. Those do come in handy here in the uh, long run. The 10 of Dennis, just like you talked about up here, he did stay out to try and lead some laps. After he did that, he did go down pit road. And now he's back on the same strategy as everybody else. And Dave, looking at it right now, Marty Ray, Joshua Gillen. These two drivers are two tire heroes. And we have 32 laps remaining so far. But everybody else behind them, the whole entire field did take four tires, a full tank of gas. So them having two tires just might affect them in the long run, but we are now back one to green. We are about to find out exactly how this affects them, if it does affect them, if any. The 6.5 Marty Ray will have Hunter McDaniel right behind him. 40 of Joshua Gillen with the help of the 10 of Caleb Daniels on the outside. And once we go green, that will give us 30 laps remaining. Uh, I think we're going to have more than 13 laps here, Sean. Say again? You said we were going to have 13 laps remaining? Oh, no, I said uh, 30. Sorry, my, oh. uh, that, that strong accent, man. <laughs> well, yeah, you are from Texas. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> the drivers are getting bunched up nice and tight. Going green this time by with 30 laps remaining. 3-0 laps remaining uh, this time by. Let's see exactly what happens with a new viewer there in the chat. That will be John Brumet. Very good to see you, buddy. Well, this is going to be very, very interesting. It has been go time, but now it is actually go, go time. So no more give or take. No more give or take. The uh, pace car does dip off. Marty Ray still holding pace. He puts it on the floor. He does catch the drivers off guard. The body of Joshua Gillen on the outside line. Sees it coming, but not quite. The foot seven hundred McDonald's will try to take advantage of him on the inside. Before turn one, who stays side by side for the second place spot. The 10 of Kelly Dennis as well trying to get around the 19 of Andy Starcher, but Andy Starcher was, did get around him there uh, before the exit of turn number two. And now the 10 of Dennis does have the success of Ralph Bonaforce right behind him. And Dave hadn't seen much of Ralph uh, from the last time we checked on him, which was him being the lead. Uh, but now he is back up here in the top 10. Take a look at this, the 97 of Garrett Robinson back out on the track after that big accident. He is back in 13th position on the lead lap, so he's got enough laps, though. I wonder if he'll be able to get back through traffic and uh, get back up front again. Speaking of him getting through traffic, Dave, he is following the line of the 42 of Giuseppe Higuera while being pushed by the 95. Actually, that's going to get to 95. 
of Chris Gillum. As we speak, Garrett right now is just weaving in and out of this traffic, pushing the 42 of Giuseppe Higuera for a common good pass, the 36 of Jason Eisenhower. Well, did it take this time to ride on the in car of uh, the 97 Robinson? So we're gonna watch him work. We do see him finally clear the 36 of Jason Eisenhower. Now his next victim is the 42 of Giuseppe Higuera. It looks the inside of Giuseppe Higuera, they do go side by side through turns number three and four off turn four. He just might have him. No, they say neck and neck. He will drop off the, uh, that's going to be the 48 of Christopher Smith. And also, uh, that's going to be, let's see who else. I can't quite see that driver up there. That might be, yep, yeah, Adam Eisenhower. Adam Eisenhower is being shown uh, two laps down at this point. Uh, uh, Giuseppe Higuera does go way wide. 95 of Chris Gillum did back off of him. And now Robinson all over the 48 of Christopher Smith. Oh, Dave, one driver in the grass off the exit of four. Can't catch a number on that driver. That's the 18 of Rick Mason. Dave, he was able to stay out of trouble. If you can, Dave, let's back it up on Rick Mason and see what happened because he did blow his motor. Oh, looks like on, on the back stretch here, he got into the uh, wall there. I'm not sure, not really seeing exactly what happened here. Oh, he smacked hard into the wall, just threw right up into the wall of one and two. Highly unfortunate there as he comes out of two, he just keeps it down below the yellow line. Just, just coasted down on the pit road. Oh, Dave, right on his in car. He did turn that wheel, but it was way too late. And that what did sneak up on him. That was a very hard impact with a moving machine and a non-moving wall, which did blow his motor on impact. Very unfortunate indeed for Rick Mason, but it is on pit road. As we speak, getting some service on that machine. And the coaster flies here on lap number 105. We've got to back it up and see who might have been involved. Oh man, not good. It is going to involve the 97 of Garrett Robinson. As we pull up the Dre Broadcasting Instant Replay, we're going to go back and take a look here. As he was battling the 86 of Adam Eisenhower. Let's see if we can see exactly what happened. It looked like he thought he was cleared. He wasn't. Made contact with the 86 high up into the outside wall. And it looks like he is going to blow that motor and have to get a tow. Oh man, very unfortunate indeed for 97 of Garrett Robinson and the 86 of uh, Adam Eisenhower who were involved. And 34 of Devin Schneider got a piece of the action. Oh man, but great job by all drivers uh, making it not worse than it was because it could have been way worse than it was. But going back up front, we are being led by Marty Ray, Hunter McDaniel second, Joshua Gillen third, Ralph Vanderforce fourth. Uh, Ralph Vanderforce back in the top five and Caleb Daniels in the fifth place spot rounding up the top ten. Oh, top top five and so far the drivers now have about 11 laps on their tires so something tells me dave they will be pitting in yeah it should be the last pit here with 23 so we are going to keep an eye on our race leader 65 marty race see what he's going to do looks like he is coming down on the pit pit road and last time marty ray and joshua gillen did decide to take two tires so right now let's ride with him with Marty Ray and see if it takes two tires, four tires, or no tires at all. And we do have Eli Green. Good to see you there, Eli. It's been a while. Dang it, Garrett. <laughs> yep, yeah, Marty Ray's right side does go up left side. Yep, left side goes up, going from two-tire pit stop to a four-tire pit stop here with about 22 laps remaining this time by, but we'll be beaten off pit road by Joshua Gillen and the 57 of Hunter McDaniel. And speaking of Hunter McDaniel and Joshua Gillen, these two drivers did take two tires this time by compared to the rest of the field who took four tires with a full tank of gas. So they are set uh, until the very end of the race. And 81 of Prime still staying out behind the pace car. David White, 31, Andrew Riley, 95, Chris Gillum, all behind the pace car here, being shot at least one or more laps down. 
Uh, very unfortunate indeed for all these drivers, but very determined to get the job done regardless. And this does give us some time to get a race interview in. So let's focus on the 40 of Joshua Gillen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are being joined by the 40 of Joshua Gillen representing Firebase Motorsports. Get a cup there, Josh. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. How are you? Nerve wracking. <laughs> oh, man, I can imagine. And Josh, tonight, we didn't see much of you in the beginning of the race, but then here after the halfway mark, after you crossed the halfway mark, we saw you all over the top five, just pretty much uh, battling these boys. How's the machine handling tonight? Very well best car I've had all season oh man that is very very good to hear is that why you're taking two tires compared to four I, I'm trying to do a little strategy I'm trying to stay ahead of Marty but it's it's killing me right now Marty's a lot faster than me oh 10 four but man you have been doing an amazing job regardless and Josh we had a chance to speak with the 10 of Caleb Daniels we talked about when you guys had those uh, long runs the car was getting very very tight how's uh, your opinion on the, on the setup and further you go, it did get a little tighter, but uh, I just kept moving up, got about uh, probably about the third lane in the corners, and it started working out a little bit better for me. Oh man, that makes a lot of sense. Well, we are glad that you have adapted and found uh, some great race lines uh, that are working well for you, uh, working in your favor uh, here so far in the long run. But buddy, you are now back one to green. What should I expect to see from you before the end, before the uh, race ends? I'm hoping for a top three. Uh, I don't think I can get a win out of it, but I will do what I can for it. That is very good to hear, buddy. That's all you can do. And man, you have come a long way here in tonight's race. Had some bad luck early on, but are now back up here in the top three and battling these drivers for the race lead. Well, buddy, get back to the driver's seat and make us proud. Thank you, sir. And that was the 40 of Joshua Gillen representing Firebase Racing. Well, we are now back one to green here once again, uh, being led by Hunter McDonough, who decides to start on the outside line with the help of the 65 of Marty Ray. Actually, with the help of the uh, 66 of Rob Manafort, sorry, on the outside line. On the inside is Marty Ray and the 40 of Joshua Gillen going green this time by lap 109. Let's see, 19 laps remaining, one to cross start finish line. So it definitely is go time. We have two two-tire heroes, first and second place driver, McDaniel and Gillen. So let's see how it affects them. If this thing goes green, the pace car dips off. Hunter puts it down the floor. The 40 of Joshua it is costing him to inspire Marty. It takes him three wide before this, the uh, straightaway here. Uh, the start finish line. Rob Bonaparte on the outside line. will propel past the 40 of Gillen. Benefit from his mistake. And Marty Ray falls back in line. Gives the position back away to the 40 of Joshua Gillen, who is overtaking the 66 of Bonaparte. 40 of Gillen going back down to the inside line to get the shortest way around the track to uh, secure his second place spot away from Ralph Van der Force. And Marty Ray looks the inside of Ralph Van der Force. Ralph still staying high. It's the high side living up to his name. And Ralph dropping off the 40 of Joshua the best he can. But the back in the pack, Dave 42, Giuseppe Higuera 48, Chris Smith going at it side by side for position 8 and 9 respectively. As we speak, the 42 of Higuera does propel past 48 of Smith, and Smith has a big, a big uh, drive to, to uh, focus on now the 34 of David Schneer. I don't know why I said big there, I was thinking of a different word, but big somehow came to mind. And right now, 40, 34 of Schneer looks the inside of 48 of Christopher Smith, who is being pushed. Looks like that's going to be the 95 of Chris Gillum. Oh, 48 of Smith, 34 of Schneer must make contact. 48 of Smith goes hard into the wall off the exit of two. He's able to bounce off it unharmed. He will lose a lot of speed, all his speed, all his momentum, all his spots lost. And he's going to have to back it up and do it all over again. Oh, most definitely, but 16 laps to go here. Up front, we are being led by Hunter McDaniel. He has now pulled out six-tenths of a lead over Joshua Gillen. 
Joshua Gillen second, Ralph Vanderborst third, Marty Ray fourth, Caleb Daniels rounding out your top five. Yep, a lot of drivers going at it side by side. We do have uh, Dirk Stalaker, Adam Eisenhower who were going at it. But that wonderful position, we do have Adam Eisenhower being shown four laps down. Dirk Stalaker is still back on the still on the lead lap in 10th place. Adam, a man on mission, takes a 3 out of the 4 and the 95 of Chris Gillum and the 4 of Michael Snow, that was. And now uh, Adam Eisenhower trying to get his laps back the hard way. Once again, he is four laps down, having a rough race here tonight. Uh, but now his next victim will be the 34 of David Schneer, but going back up from the 40 of Joshua Gillen, still second place behind the 57 Hans McDaniel. It has six of Ralph Van der Forst right behind. And Ralph Van der Forst and 6-5 of Marty Ray going at it side by side for third place position. But Ralph Van der Forst does drive it in hard entering turn one. And Marty Ray did back off to let him have it. Yeah, no, no need to push the issue. He's still got 14 laps. Just kind of got a ride here. Hunter McDaniel, he actually had that gap closed there by the 40 of Josh Killen. Now down to four tenths of a second. So, yeah, well, five tenths now. So, looks like Joshua Gillen's closing in just a little bit. And Dave, speaking of closing in, we have a, a uh, drive for the back of the pack as well. Who is making some moves as we speak? The 19 of Andy Starcher. Um, back in the top five, just overtook the 10 of Caleb Daniels. And now his next victim in line for position is 65 of Marty Ray. He is about, let's see, 1.6 seconds uh, behind Marty Ray. So he does have a little bit of work to do uh, before he gets to uh, Marty Ray. So he can be able to pounce on him for that position. And Caleb Daniels right now is trying to secure his sixth place spot. Trying to stay ahead of the 42 of Giuseppe Higuera at the same time using the draft of the 19. That's going to be 42 of Giuseppe Higuera right in front of him. Yeah, Giuseppe just got around the 10 of Caleb Daniels. That's why I was so confused. Because I was speaking, the uh, the position is just updated, which did catch me off guard a little bit. But the back of the pack, 47 of Dirk Sadek right now. Still riding single file behind Adam Eisenhower. And Adam now has finally caught up to 34 of David Schneer. Dave going back up from the 40 of Joshua Gillen High is catching up to the 15 of Hunter McDaniel, but now has Ralph Bonaforce all over his back bumper. Yeah, they are starting to get into some lap traffic there as they go around the 81 of Travis Pryor. Travis Pryor back in 15th position, two laps down, so they have got to work. But here we got a battle Ralph Vandervoorst, 40, Josh Gillen. Vandervoorst on the inside, two turns, one and two. Josh Gillen's just going to let him take it. Is he going to try the crossover? No, he's not close enough for the crossover. And ladies and gentlemen, this is now the 10 lap to go mark. Nine laps to go. Once we start fishing line this time by. So get active once again in the chat. Let us know who you are rooting for. Because uh, it's going to be a wild race here tonight. Hans McDaniel trying to get his second win of the season. Rob Bonifors trying to get his first win of the season. And so is Joshua Gillen. And Marty Ray having trying to have his second win as well. And Andy Starcher uh, his first. And a lot of drivers in the back of the pack. Just like the first appearance here tonight. And so far spanking these boys. Being on a sixth place spot behind the 19 of Andy Starcher. Yeah, but he's got some time gap to make up if he wants to get into that top five. Andy Starcher is a man on a mission though. He is, well actually he has lost a lot of ground to the 40 of Joshua Gillen. Is uh, Joshua Gillen's about to lose another position to the 65 of Marty Ray? Marty Ray does push way wide. Porto Gillen takes back the third place spot from the 65 of Marty Ray. And Marty Ray lost a lot of speed. Oh, his momentum off turn two, uh, having to let up and put his foot to the brake uh, to avoid getting hugged by that wall. But up front, David Butter for the race lead brewing up between Ralph Vanderpoort and Hunter McDaniel. Once again, Ralph Vanderpoort back from the dead i should say because in the beginning there he did uh, have some bad luck and went for the back of the pack but he's now back up here in the top two and battling the 57 hunting mcdaniel who was rightfully his that race lead and pat t now rooting for the 57 hunting mcdaniel hunting mcdaniel so far still leading this race and right uh, riding in his rear view trying to better uh, hold off the 6-6 of ralph vanaforst 
Yeah, Hunter McDaniel now leading 62 laps of the 128 we ran here tonight. Six laps to go. But I tell you what, that's 66 of Ralph Vanderborst. He is hungry. He started on the pole. He is wanting to get back up front. So we are going to have a battle as we got a battle between Marty Ray and Joshua Gillen. Also for that third position right behind him. Here goes the 66 of Ralph Vanderborst to the inside of Hunter McDaniel through the dog leg. Who is going to get out? Ralph Vanderborst is going to lead that lap. Is uh, he is going to propel here into turn number one here comes the 57 of Hunter McDaniel he is thinking about the crossover nope he is just going to ride right behind him here for now yeah but Hunter did not mean to leave his inside open on the front stretch last lap and right now trying to figure out a way to set up Rob Vanderfors here before it's too late but Rob pulls away off turn four with five laps remaining four laps this time by what a game changer for Ralph Vanderforce and Hunter McDaniel and Joshua Gillen Marty Ray still going at it side by side for third place. Man, these guys are battling. They want to get on that podium. They want to get interviewed here. And he starts her back. Oh, and he starts her into the wall. That is going to hurt him as he now passed by the 42 of Giuseppe. Man, he hit that outside wall hard. He has got some heavy damage on that right hand, right hand side. Very unfortunate indeed for 19 of Andy Starcher, but man, 42, Giuseppe Guerra gladly takes that fifth place spot and makes his first appearance in the top five here in tonight's race for his first race with Extreme Motorsports Pro Can and Series this season. Very nice to see this driver propel here in tonight's race, making his first race of the season count after starting a seventh, but now being shown fifth, but going back up front, Rob Vanderforce, Dave, now being shown about eight tenths of a second ahead of second place driver, Hunter McDaniel. Yeah, and meanwhile, these guys are still battling it out for third, Marty Ray, Joshua Gillen, right now, Marty Ray sitting in that third position, Joshua Gillen is not letting him go, he wants that third position, as they are coming up on some lap cars. Yeah, Marty Ray, 40, Joshua Gillen going to take him three wide, no, 40, Gillen does back off. Let's Marty Ray have it to avoid getting into the lap car of the 81 of Travis Pryor. Man, that could have been ugly. But the 40 of Gillen right now still determined to have a top three here tonight. I went for 65 of Marty Ray, but Marty Ray not going to let him have it just easily. He won't let him get around him without a fight. He will fight until the death, and we now have one more lap remaining. This is the wide flag. It's not only that. And Ralph Vanderpool still leading about eight tenths of a second uh, ahead of the 57 Hunter McDaniel. Yeah, I think Ralph Vanderpool is going to come away with the win. Hunter McDaniel is going to get second, but who is going to take third? Is it going to be Marty Ray? Here comes Joshua Gillen on the inside. Not enough track. Marty Ray is going to finish in the third position. Oh, oh, oh man, what a fight for third place between Marty Ray and Joshua Gillen. Giuseppe Higuera comes out in fifth place. First appearance here tonight. And comes to the top five. Very, very impressive on his part. Uh, Rob Panapos wins tonight. So his first win of the season. Uh, Hunter Mijano second. Uh, Marty Ray third. Joshua Gillen fourth. And Giuseppe Higuera in the fifth place spot. And that does round up the top five in tonight's race. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was quite a race. And thank you for tuning in. We will we'll get an interview with the top three drivers. Van der Forst, uh, McDaniel, and Marty Ray. So stay tuned. We do have the success of Ralph on the fourth stop, turning it down. Uh, I'm gone.
Well, we are being joined by our top four drivers here tonight. Well, top three and a special guest 42 of jo Josep Higuera. So, Rob Van Apoor, Santo Migliano, Marty Ray, and Josep Higuera. We're gonna start with tonight's race winner having his first win of the season, Mr. High Side himself, Ralph Van der Force. Check up there, Ralph. Oh, actually, it looks like one. Uh, his mic is muted, but we will try and get get back to him. We're gonna move on to second place driver, Hunter McDaniel. Gonna go up there, Hunter. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. How you guys doing? Good. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Uh, feel, feeling good after that. <laughs> oh man, I can only imagine. It was quite the uh, battle, quite the fight on your part here tonight, Hunter. You did a lot of laps and you did haul these guys off for the most part. But tell us about your two tire strategy. Could you notice you're taking two tires, I believe two uh, pit stops in a row? Um, that last stop, yeah, we took two tires. Um, the 65 had been fast all night and we knew that, me and my crew chief knew that it was going to be hard to get around him if we couldn't beat him on pit road. Just from the way we had been running inside, almost you know, right next to each other all race. So we knew that Marty had uh, taken two tires a couple times and we had taken four one time. So we we had assumed that he was gonna take two, and, or take four, excuse me. And so we took two that last time, knew that we would come out with either the lead or close to it. And we got out there with the lead and, you know, just try to hold him off as much as we could. But eventually those, uh, those four tires by the 66 definitely came into factor later in that run. Oh, absolutely, but man, we do want to commend you on a, uh, a job well done, holding the drivers up for the most part, because only you and the 40 of Joshua Gill and you too, they're in the top five, were the only drivers who took two tires, while the rest of the field behind you did take four tires, a full tank of gas, including Marty Ray himself, and Zepiki Guerra, but that was definitely an amazing job on your part. So tell us about your experience here tonight, because we saw a lot of drivers pushing, and a little bit of drivers, I mean, a few drivers getting uh, very, very uh, loose. Yeah, it's definitely a tricky track. Um, there's, there's all, while it is a wide track, especially in turn one, there's only a few grooves that you can really take. Um, and if you don't hit that corner entry just right, you're gonna be, it, it's gonna just be super tight, and you'll, usually you'll tag that uh, turn two wall. And uh, what a lot of guys were doing is they were diving it down all the way down to the yellow. And if you touch that apron, there's a lot of loose stuff down there, and you'll just get loose, and you know your your back end will just uh, spin out and that'll be it and then with turn three it's so different than turn one that you have such a wide sweeping track that your your um, um, apex is completely different so I think that definitely played into a f effect when people were side by side and uh, the car you know out out at front handled really well but um yeah definitely back in traffic is I know a lot of lot of trouble passing just because of uh, the different um, grooves that weren't available because of the way that you know whoever you're battling was would drive you Oh, dang, well, that makes a lot of sense, and man, it was a job on your part here tonight. We noticed at one point you pushed way wide off the exit. I believe that was the exit of turn two, and because of that, that, that shot you all the way from the lead back into, I believe, fourth or fifth place, but you were still able to recover and come out in uh, second place, which is kind of ironic at this point, because Ralph Van der Force, who was, you, oh, the top three drivers, basically, have all finished where they started, which is a little bit ironic, uh, but amazing to see at the same time. Well, but it was an amazing race on your part. I want to congratulate you on your success here tonight, Hunter, representing Maverick Motorsports. But before that, you go and find words. Uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you to Extreme Motorsports. Um, they've, they've been great and uh, great help. And uh, to John Houston for spotting for me. Did a great job, helped me through a lot of those pit stops, and just to Maverick Motorsports. And uh, hopefully we can uh, get ourselves another win, maybe with uh, Ken Ladd or Travis Pryor. Congratulations once again, buddy, on your success tonight. I look forward to seeing you again next week at Rockingham Speedway. Have a good night. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. And that was second place driver Hunter McDaniel with one win in his belt so far. But right behind him is another driver who had his first win last week at Auto Club Speedway for the uh, Alpha 250. Marty Ray starting third, finishing third. Get a cup there, Marty. Hey, John. Good. How you doing? Oh, I am doing good, too. Thank you. Man, Marty, tonight you had your hands full, man. You had a lot of battles all race long. It was amazing seeing you guys battle side by side for so long. You know, it was difficult to get the outside line to work. But you guys definitely did put in a, a very, very hard show uh, despite that. But tell us a little bit about your last couple of laps that we, we, uh, between you and the 40 of uh, Gillen. Yeah, Sean, that was the, the battle of a lifetime. Uh, you know, we went back and forth just about every lap. 
Uh, I was trying to wear him down. I knew he was getting his tires hot, and then I ended up getting my tires hot. And uh, it was just pretty much a battle to the end, you know, to see who could hold the corner the tightest. Oh, oh man! But by looks of it, you did do the uh, most amazing job, and were, was able to get around him for the third place spot, uh, coming out in the top three after having your first win last week at Auto Club. So that's twice in a row in the podium. So I want to congratulate you on that. And just about your uh, race experience, that's all, uh, all race long tonight. All race long, <clears throat> the car felt really good. Um, everything's tight on that track. Um, it's a, the setup on those cars is tight, so you got to be careful. You got to take it easy. Get into a rhythm, get into the turns without, um, you know, oversteering the car, and, and uh, it, it'll it'll last a lot longer. Um, I had an issue; I overshot my pit, uh, probably about three yellows, or three cautions ago, so that put me back into like six. So I had to battle my way back, but um, overall, it was uh, really good. The car handled really well. Oh, 10 4, buddy. We are very, very glad to hear about that. And it was nice seeing the momentum carry over uh, from last week's race at Auto Club. And speaking of next, uh, last week's race and now next week's race at Rockingham Speedway, what should we expect to see from you? Do you expect to see the momentum uh, double so you can uh, have your second win this season? Yeah, you know, we definitely had some experience at, Rock, at the Rock. Um, it's a brutal track. It's bumpy. It's short. It's nasty. Um, we've had experience on that track, so we're ready for it. Oh, oh man, since you are very positive, that makes us even more happy and uh, gives us something to look forward to. And buddy, with that said, look forward to seeing you again next week and congratulations on your success tonight. Any final words? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank ExtremeMotorsports99.com for keeping this league together for us and letting us through all this and have, have a good time racing. I'd like to thank uh, Jerry Broadcasting for putting this out there for all of our viewers and uh, of course, uh, um, I can't his name right now, but um, Vern Bradley for at being the admin and take, you know taking care of everybody to get this race going. Once again, buddy, congratulations on your success, and look forward to seeing you again next week at Rockingham Speedway. Have a good night, buddy, and go celebrate. Thank you. And that was 65, Marty Ray finishing in the third place position, rounding up the podium finishes. We will back it up to the race winner, having triple ones across the board, was dead all race long and came back to the lead with about five laps remaining. Six six of Ralph Vanderforce, Mr. High Side himself. Good up there, Ralph. Hey, how you guys doing? <laughs> Good, how are you? Fine, fine. Excited. Oh man, I can only imagine, Ralph, having your first win of the season here tonight at Kentucky Speedway. And man, you had a, a very, very wicked fast machine out there. You were very untouchable. You were Mr. High Side. You didn't get a chance to work the outside line so much last week at Auto Club, but you definitely had a better chance here tonight. But it seemed as though that war did really love you off turn four, man. Yeah, this is a really fun track. You know, I got a comment on when I started the race there. I could have swore somebody got in and hacked my computer and put all my settings back at, 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 at normal. I, uh, I thought I hit my mark and put my foot into it, and I just shot out to the wall. And then, uh, boy, it took everything out of me, and I just had to ride behind the field there and, and almost learn how to drive the dang car again or, or get my confidence back. And, and uh, you know, it slowly came together. Oh man, it was amazing seeing you come back from the back of the pack in the broadcast I talked about uh, you coming back from the dead, you know, coming out of nowhere and taking back all those rightfully yours, which was that race lead. And once you got around Hunter McDaniel, man, you were long gone. He could not catch up to you. He had nothing against you uh, at that point. It was very, very good to see you uh, come back. But uh, after racing tonight here at uh, Kentucky Speed, what do you think you've done a better job at uh, to, uh, to maybe better your chance in the beginning of the race? I got to quit making mental errors. Uh, slow restarts, um, the error I made on lap two there, um, actually lap one and lap two in the same corner, and uh, pit strategy. There, there's still always stuff to work on. Oh, that's absolutely right, man, but it's very good to see you succeed every single race, just getting better and better and making it a bad day for, or a bad night for these drivers every single week because just keep getting better and better and you're the only driver here uh, who can work the outside line for the most part because that's why we call you Mr. High Side, the 6'6 of Ralph Vanderforce. Oh, but before you go, any final words? 
Well, I just, you know, Vern and all the admins for putting this league together and having the patience to put up with all us guys. And uh, it's just a blast. And you can see everybody getting better. And uh, it's just a fun league. And uh, I got to put a shout out to my boss for letting me put Bismarck State College on there. We got our line workers program that I'm supporting, and it's uh, and one of the top in the country up here in Little North Dakota. And uh, yeah, it's good. Well, Rafa, congratulations, a job well done here tonight, having your first win of the season. Very, very impressive, man. That high side has definitely paid off. I look forward to seeing you working the high side more often the rest of the season and to, uh, next week as well at uh, Rockingham Speedway. Have a good night, buddy. Thank you. That was 66 of Ralph Vanderfors finishing in the first place spot. But we have a new driver here tonight. First race uh, for him this season, the 42 of Giuseppe Higuera having his first race and finishing in the top five. The 42 of Giuseppe Higuera once again. You got to come up there, Giuseppe? Thank you, sir. And Giuseppe, it was a job well done on your part. Well, rate your, uh, how can you, how would you rate your first race here with Extreme? Well, overall, I mean, in the beginning, wasn't too hot. Uh, kind of had a little malfunction with my G27, so that ended up putting me all the way to the back of the pack. Uh, after I was all the way in the back, kind of had a mental thought that, you know, I thought the race was over, but I knew I had to keep pushing and keep pushing every time the uh, green would go out. So overall, I think from starting out all the way in seventh, going all the way back to the back, and then bringing it back up to fifth, I'd say overall, did a pretty well, good job. Oh, good job indeed, man. You were unstoppable. And you were a fast driver starting seventh. You know, that's a very, very fast lap time uh, with a, a field this strict. We have a lot of drivers out there, a lot of amazing drivers who get, know how to get the job done. And it's very, very, it's nearly impossible uh, to beat them. But you definitely did prove yourself here tonight, making your first race with the Pro K and N series here, the Extreme Motorsports 99, a, a race to remember, which is very, very impressive. And man, with that said, you, you, have, you had an amazing race tonight, and it doesn't get any worse from here. It gets only nothing but better. So what should we expect to see from you next week at uh, Rockingham? Yeah, definitely. I'm very excited. I wanted to thank uh, Vern, actually, for letting me race this evening. So it was a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. Well, buddy, Giuseppe, congratulations on your uh, success here tonight. Basically, let's talk about uh, your success tonight. What contributed to your success, and what should we expect to see you change uh, before next race? Definitely going to have to fix a little bit of my uh, pitch strategies here. Um, otherwise, I do need to fix my G27, possibly hook up a brand new one, because that definitely did mess me up a little bit. But otherwise, pretty much just fixing my pitch strategies, everything about there. Well, buddy, look forward to seeing you again next week and uh, hopefully see you have your first win of the Extreme Motorsports Pro KNN series this season. And also, congratulations on your success on your first race tonight and look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a good night. Thank you. Do the same. And that was the 42 of Giuseppe Higuera finishing in the fifth place spot. So that's, that does run up our interviews. Uh, Ralph Van der Forst, Hunter McDaniel, Marty Ray, and Giuseppe Higuera. And that was an amazing race. Dave, I am very beat. I am very... I'm speechless. It was amazing. So, so many battles throughout the track. This is a very tricky track, but the drivers definitely did prove the track wrong and spank the track and did not let the track spank them. But it was amazing overall. Any final words, Dave? Uh, I'm just like you, speechless. It was a great race. Uh, as these guys are showing their talent out there, I look forward to seeing them move up here in Extreme Motorsports, maybe getting into the Truck Series, maybe even getting up into the Xfinity and the Cup Series. Oh, absolutely. Make it uh, make some bad news or oh, some bad nights for uh, Tom Wetmore, Hunter McDaniel, those drivers uh, who also race uh, the track series. Because definitely once those these guys here advance the track series, it's going to be uh, quite the competition uh, for uh, the already existing drivers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we also want to thank you guys for joining us here tonight for the Pit Light 125 by the Extreme Motorsports 99 Pro KN Series. This was round number eight. And we now have two more races uh, before the chase begins. So these guys are giving it all they have so they can be able to lock themselves into the chase uh, for the championship. Once again, it's a 10 race, uh, 10 race uh, regular season and five race chase series. Uh, so for a total of uh, 15 races. So it is definitely go time. It has been go time for these drivers this season to try and lock themselves into the points. So once again, thank you for joining us. The next race will be next week 
at Rockingham Speedway for the Napa Auto Parts 150 for round number 9 of 10 with the Extra Motorsports and Pro Can N Series brought to you by iRacing Broadcast Overlay and Graphics iBog. Well, tomorrow night we are coming to you back here live on the Dre Broadcasting Network with the Extreme Motorsports 99 Truck Series for the Drive for Diabetes Awareness at Kentucky Speedway, right here at Kentucky with the trucks. I am Sean Zulu and Dave Everly behind the cameras and thank you for watching tonight. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you get notified every single time we go live because we, we are live six nights a week. Uh, from different tracks, different drivers, different machines, but the excitement still stays high. So look forward to seeing you again next broadcast. Have a good night.